everybody, Stu, AG6AG. You know, you ever wonder why your radio isn't performing when you're transmitting on your from a battery or from a distance from your power supply? Have you considered power line loss? That's the subject for today's video. Oh, and if you think of it, help me out and go down there and click subscribe. You'll get notifications whenever I come out with new videos. Also, if you like this video, click the like button. Without any further ado, power line loss. Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. And I've got to tell you, I ran across a problem when I was doing some tests. And I just had to share it with you because it's something that we all are supposed to know and we're all supposed to take into consideration when we're setting up uh, electrical stuff. And, you know, just sometimes it just completely falls out of our brain. Doesn't that sound silly? Um, let me give you the scenario. I purchased a couple boost converters off the Internet. Uh, these are made in China and I wanted to test them. Right. So I buy two of them. They're very inexpensive. And I figure I'm going to blow one up because I'm going to drive the thing till it explodes, basically, to see what it can take. So I get the first one on the bench and I'm adjusting this little boost uh, converter out and I've got it up where I want it. My input voltage, standard 12 volt deep cycle battery, output voltage. I'm looking for 13.8 to 14.1. I figure that should cover enough of a voltage uh, raise that it's going to take care of my transmitter power demand from my radios, right? Because you're going to lose a little, we know, from, uh, you know, the cable, the power cable that's going from, uh, you know, the power source to the radio. Well, you know, I said that just like, oh yeah, it's a, a tenth of a volt or something like that. Interestingly enough, I forgot how much it really was, and I should have known better. And I thought to myself, you know, the only reason I know this is I had a problem, and I started testing all my power feeds. So I thought it would be interesting to show this as a video for you guys, because it really is an education. Let's go ahead and switch the screen up a little bit to uh, the uh, pictures of the bench here. Well, what we have here is, uh, if you notice over on the far right, uh, that's where you've got the uh, uh, new boost converter. And then, of course, uh, my fluke meter. There's uh, that little black box, the LED. That's just a voltmeter that I put together from a little voltmeter thing I got on Amazon. Um, on the far left, now that is a uh, uh, BFR, or a big friggin' resistor. Uh, that is a 1 ohm 200 watt resistor. Um, now, if you do the math, that's going to give me about 10 amps draw, a little under. So when I load this thing, I'm going to have a general idea of, you know, what it's doing and how well it's holding the voltage I set it to. So let's kind of hone in on the... Uh, actual device itself, the um, uh, power uh, 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 boost unit. Now, if you look, the wire that's coming down towards us, uh, that little uh, pair of wires is a 12-gauge uh, zip line, okay, and uh, it terminates to a nice size battery. Uh, we've got a 100 amp hour deep cycle lead acid battery. We have two of them here. Um, we're going to be working with the one on the left. It really doesn't matter, but that's what my fluke is hooked to right now. And I'm just looking at surface voltage. It has a full surface charge on it. So this is going to vary uh, anywhere from 12.7 all the way up to, you know, 12.8 uh, as it surfaces. Um, we'll knock that off pretty quick on the initial and it'll probably come down to 12.2 or 12.3 when we're actually putting that much of a, a 10 amp load, uh, you know, over a period of time can shirt you a battery down. Um, and of course, our BFR, our big friggin' resistor, the 200 watt 1 ohm. Uh, and boy, does this thing get hot when you're just feeding it into a battery. Uh, but it puts a good load on the battery. 10 amps is a sufficient load. Uh, 10 amps is a sufficient load to test uh, the components. Uh, supposedly the boost adapter is going to handle 40, right? 
10 should be no problem for any sustained period of time. Now, um, here I've hooked up the 12 gauge wire from the battery to the boost uh, controller and I've got 12.76 so you know the, the battery surfaced everything's good that looks real good right so let's take a look okay well no load yet on the boost converter I've got 13.94 so I'm within the range that I want to be let's go ahead and toss the load and see what happens all right so what do we got look at that now I have that uh, BFR plugged in to the output of the uh, power um, converter, right? So the boost converter now is putting out a perfect 13.8 volts. Just about perfect. It's a little higher, but you know, I mean, uh, that's great. That's exactly where I want it. And I was just getting ready to pack this up, and I said, I wanted to see what the input voltage was, you know, uh, just to see how, you know, it's nice and consistent. So let's see what I'm actually putting into it. And this is where I got the shock. You see that? That's 11.77 volts. Oh my God, I said, I must have a bad battery. I just tested these things a couple months ago. You know, I try to test my batteries every quarter. I, my God, you know, I shouldn't have that low voltage. Maybe I should check it at the battery. And much to my surprise, 12.14 volts at the battery. You know what? That's not a bad battery. I got 10 amps I'm drawing continuously on this thing. The surface charge is certainly gone by this point. Um, wow, that's almost, that's almost a half a volt. Wow, a half a volt. I'm losing a half a volt. And then I thought about it and I said, you know, this is 12 gauge wire. And it's only, it's only traveling, what, seven feet? Yeah, think about it. Think about that loss factor. That's real, okay? You can't argue that. So, it just goes to show you, um, if, we, if we think about this in a more rational way, I mean, my goodness, 11.77 is what's going into this to deliver that 13.8, okay, for 10 amps. Think about keying that 50-watt VHF transceiver in your car that has 25 foot of feed line going from the battery in the front of the car to the radio that you have bolted in the back, okay? Uh, what do you think the voltage might be for it? You ever wonder why, you know, your radio just isn't getting out as good as it should? Well... You could be suffering from enough of a voltage loss that you're not getting full power out of the radio. Anyway, again, it shocked me. That's a lot of loss, I thought, for seven feet. And then I started looking at the numbers, and you know what? That was about standard. If you measure out what the estimated loss is, well, there you go. Um, oh, so this is, this is just a little inline voltmeter. Okay, and it's. I wanted to see how close it was since I had the uh, uh, the fluke out, and I noticed it was running a little high, but that's okay. I'm actually on the output voltage right now of the boost converter, and I plugged in the load, and lo and behold, even though I've got 13.83 at the output, I've only got 13.5 volts with a foot of 14 gauge wire drawing. If you look, my current's just about 9.64 amps at about 130 watts. That's probably pretty close to accurate. So that loss is real. You're losing voltage, okay? You're losing potential. And that voltage drops low enough, you don't have enough potential to do what you need to do. Anyway, I wanted to share that with you because we're supposed to know that. I've got 8-gauge wire running from the battery in the front of my car about 20 feet to the radio in the back of my car, and I still have, oh, about 7 tenths of a volt drop with that. But that's acceptable, uh, because when the car is running, I'm putting out about 14 volts. So, anyway, 
there you go. This is Stu, AG6AG, and 73 for now. Hope to see you real soon. Well, got to tell you, that was a surprise to me. Um, the bigger surprise is I never planned on doing this video in the first place. It kind of fell into my lap when I was working with that boost converter. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it, and I really hope you learned something. And you know what? If you like the videos, click on subscribe. You'll get notified every time I come out with a new video, and it sure helps me out when you do it. And you know what? If you like this video, click like. And if you have any comments or questions, my goodness, just go ahead and make them right down there in the comment section. I try to answer every question I get on every video. Anyway, with that, 73, great to have you with me, and I hope I hear you on the air.